You may remember how warriors, DKs, and prop paladins were smashing out levels in Botanica when Wrath of the Lich King was released. But surely things will be different in Cataclysm, right? Right now, according to aggregated data collected on the beta, leveling up in Hydral will grant you around 850 to 900,000 experience per hour. Keep in mind that it's on the beta, so it could be either lower or higher based on how layering looks on release. The zone has quite a few bottlenecks where people are competing for resources, so I don't have high hopes when it comes to leveling in Hydral on release. Once you get to Deep Palm and beyond, the questing experience starts to pick up, with Deep Palm offering around 1.2 million experience per hour and 1.5 million in Oldham. But this method that you can do right out of the gate at level 80 can grant you all the way up to 3 million experience per hour with optimal gear and route. We'll be heading to Halls of Lightning, where we will be doing full solo clears of the dungeon. To showcase how approachable this is, I went on my Feral Druid that has around 5.7 thousand gear score and completely unoptimized gear. Obviously, the better gear that you have, the faster you'll be able to scale this farm. My full best death knight was getting around 2.6 to 3 million experience per hour, and that's with abilities on the beta still not functioning properly. Keep in mind that this video will just be about showcasing the leveling method and the route I'm taking is far from optimized. I'll release a guide as we get closer to the release with optimized route and pulls, consumables and talents for you to be able to push your experience per hour as high as possible. Alright, so before we head into the dungeon, there are a few things we can do to make things easier and our time spent more efficient. Obviously pick up flask and food, but also invisibility potions, healing potions, drums and scrolls, and one or two heirloom trinkets. Depending on your class self-healing, the heirloom trinkets can offer far more value than double DPS trinkets would. But on my DK that has outrageous self-healing, I won't be using them while leveling here. We'll start by going pack to pack while prioritizing certain mobs. We go for menders, over tacticians, over skycallers, over reavers. Here you're going to have to feel out the pace at which you pull. As a feral druid, I didn't get any value from doing big pulls due to the lackluster AoE DPS at level 80, and the constant stuns from the reavers were making me play more defensively than I would have liked. We want to skip the first boss whenever possible, but if you're too slow at clearing, it'll be faster for you to kill him than to wait for him to pass back. I found it most efficient to kill the ants before going ham on the boss, as they have a rather strong heal that they can cast on the boss. Everything else until the second boss is very straightforward. Keep pulling at a solid pace and try to find the sweet spot between damage output and survivability. It's worth keeping in mind that when you're watching me do this, that I'm currently playing on the beta where a ton of things are missing from the class toolkits. I don't have access to Mangle currently, which slows me down significantly. For the boss, I recommend pulling a few mobs into the boss while you're fighting him if you can survive it. In the room after the second boss, I'd recommend using an invisibility potion to skip this room unless you have a reliable way to get out of fears. It simply slows you down too much and can be dangerous if you pull the entire room in one go. Druids can use Sprint, but other classes can use Rocket Boots and pray it doesn't let you down. In the Elemental Room, just keep going like normal while focusing the Storm Vortex. I was struggling too much with magical damage to do any fancy pulls, but feel out what you're comfortable with. I skipped the balcony on my druid, but I'd highly recommend pulling it as the mobs grant efficient experience and the small mobs will heal you for a significant amount if you're running with the heirloom trinkets. The third boss is quite a bit of magic damage, so I had to cast a few healing touches on myself in the intermission. It didn't seem to pay off doing any fancy pulls here with the boss, at least on my druid. In the next room, I'd recommend pulling the vanguards and the constructs into other packs. They're not dangerous at all and will give you more opportunities to proc your mastery and give you rage. For the packs, we focus on the rune shapers while interrupting charged flurry. Sentinels is next on the priority list as they can cast a spell that enrages the mobs around him. Finish those off while dragging the rest of the mobs into the next packs. This is the room where I feel like I have the highest possibility to optimize my pulls and route. I currently skip quite a few mobs in here as my clear time is quite high on the druid compared to what's possible but I recommend playing around with going the full route here for even more experience. At this point, it's simply just about pulling the rest of the mobs. There's nothing left that's very dangerous, and once we reach the boss, we simply run around him and jump down on the balcony to clear up the last few mobs from the first room while we run out to reset the dungeon. Alright, so how much experience can we expect to gain from doing the strategy? 
With my routes taking about 17 minutes with plenty of more optimizing to be done, I gain about 1.6 to 1.7 million experience per hour. Without getting any more gear and just by simply being more comfortable with the pulls, I can easily go up to 1.9 to 2 million experience per hour. On my DK with full Biss and Shadowmorn, I can go around 2.6 to 2.8 million experience per hour consistently, which will probably be higher as well since a lot of the core DK mechanics are not working properly on the beta. Some people on the DK Discord have been able to push it all the way up to 3.1 million experience per hour. To put this into perspective, assuming that you can do 2 million experience per hour, that will ding you 81 in 48 minutes, assuming you didn't do any pre-questing. And add another 64 minutes of grinding and you will be level 82. You could go this route all the way up to level 84, but I would not go any higher than 82, since you need to finish questing in Deepholm for the Therasane questline, and you might as well do that while leveling up. Not to mention that if you do this a little bit later in the expansion, with heirlooms and rested experience, you can easily expect to gain up to 5 million experience per hour if this isn't nerfed. I'll keep you posted if there are any updates to the farm. I'll also be releasing an optimized guide on the route with my DK as we get closer to the expansion release. So if you want to be notified for that, make sure to subscribe. But that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. Until next time.